In this video, we will be taking a look at the O-Train's Western Extension, expanding service farther west to Algonquin on Line 1 and Moody on Line 3. This extension is planned to open in 2027. Westboro Station First station we're looking at today is where the line will pick up farther west from Tunney's Pasture, Westboro Station. As you can see, lots of work going on here. Roof, glass glazing, structural elements. Everything is coming up very quickly and it looks like it's going to be approaching a more complete look in the coming months and certainly by the summertime. As the line exits the station, it continues on towards the next one which is going to be next stop Kitchissippi and the station's really tightly knit into the community here the homes are pretty much steps away you can see how you can cross from one side of the community to the other by passing through the station itself without having to pass through fare gates there's a through area platforms are located one level down in the trench below grade you can see the platforms here that extend on both sides. Nice and airy, there's glass canopy over top. You can see the traction power substation just off to the side here. As the trains and guideway take off further west and head into the parkway tunnel. As the train dives down into the tunnel, it'll pass underneath the road itself. And important to note that these tunnels have a center wall dividing the east and westbound track guideways. Next stop, Sherborne. Station will have an open to the above configuration so from its departure shortly after Kitchissibi to reaching the station it's all going to be underground. It will only come out briefly to serve the station platforms. You can see it's open to the above entrances right on the side here by Byron and Richmond near Sherborne. Long station. Departing from this station, it will continue on again underground underneath the Byron Linear Park until it reaches the next stop. Next stop, New Orchard. And again, same like Sherborne, similar configuration. The entrances are oriented more west at this location. You can see again very much the same station design as Sherborne, below grade, open to the above. And a lot of people do comment, what is the protection gonna be like from the snow? So when you see the snow in the middle, that's actually on the glass canopy in the middle. Um, there'll probably be a little bit of snow on the platforms, but I'm sure there's gonna be some integrated heating or some snow removal strategy to keep those nice and clear. But it should be a really interesting station when you're down there and exploring it and waiting for the train as you feel the sky above and the fresh air coming in from all around. The station departs and continues on in the tunnel, coming out just before Lincoln Fields. You can see here it ramps back up from the portal. Next stop, Lincoln Fields. Connection between O-Train Line 1 and Line 3. This is going to be a very important interchange station for people heading west and coming from the west. Trains arrive at the station and will branch off once they leave westbound, going either towards Algonquin on Line 1 or Moody on Line 3. You can see the old legacy transitway station, at least what still remains of it. Transitway platforms on the left. The local bus service is now on a little island in the middle. The original platforms extend out in the direction of where the O-Train station is now, so those were removed long ago. You can see the O-Train station and here the new bus loop for the local bus service that's going to be serving the station directly. Again, it's a sizable area here. There's going to be a lot of buses coming through here. Lots of space for bus layup, for pickup and drop off for people. It's going to be a really interesting spot to see the hustle and bustle of when it's actually operational. You can see entrances there to get into the station on both sides. Looking down now, you can see the platforms. There's a center platform going eastbound towards downtown. 
and then two westbound platforms on both sides for Moody and Algonquin, depending on the type of service pattern that they're running. As the trains depart, they'll pass underneath Carling Avenue and into this really interesting area of ultimately four various tracks and lots of switches to allow the trains to circulate and switch to the tracks they need to be on to reach their destination at the far end. So right now we're going to be taking a look at line one going to Algonquin, which will pass underneath this flyover. Pass shortly after underneath the Queensway. And line up to reach. Next stop, Iris. This is a really nice station. It's really located in the middle of nature. Lots of trees, lots of grass. It's a very, very calm area around here. You can see the creek that was relocated and moved just off to the side there. It's going to create this nice, beautiful ambience to this area. A lot of people are wondering, what's the access like to get to the station? Entrances on both ends of the Iris overpass. Those will be stairs that will go down to the entrance level that's located below grade. Or if you need uh, ramps or an accessible way to get down, there's going to be ramps that will circle around from the ends of the overpass to reach the entrances of the station. There's no elevators here. As well, it's important to point out that if you want to switch from eastbound to westbound service, you have to exit the station entirely, cross the overpass and go back in. A great view here of the creek. You can see lots of ducks and birds have made it their home already. The snow flanking both sides, it's very stunning and beautiful with the nice zigzaggy layout and shape that it has. It's beautiful. As the train continues westbound, although in this case more southbound, we'll reach Algonquin Station. And underground at the station, there's actually some storage tracks, so they can actually park and store some trains here at the end of the line. It's not a maintenance facility, but it does have a bit of a garaging uh, functionality incorporated into it. You can see some of the track switches here are actually active and being heated, which is great to see. Next stop, Algonquin. So as the trains enter the station, they go underneath, below grade, underground, there's some track switches here to go to the storage tracks or to serve the platforms, center platform of the station itself. You can see the entrance building here right next to the Algonquin ACCE building. Just a short walk out and you can get inside. And then the connected entrance building, which is where the bus loop is going to be. It's going to be a really interesting experience to be able to come up through that entrance. Once again, looking at the first entrance, located right next to the college building itself. You just come out from that entrance pavilion, and you can cross right into the college itself, or the standalone building that has a pedestrian crossing going right into the building on the second floor and into the ACCE building. From there, a little walk through the college building itself, and you'll be able to reach the college's walkway network to reach any of the other buildings on the campus. It's always interesting how much overhead walkways there are at Algonquin, creating this great connectivity between the buildings. And with the O-Train, you'll be able to go from train into the campus without ever having to step foot outside if you so choose. Now we're looping back to Lincoln Fields. This time, instead of passing underneath the flyover, we're going to go over the flyover and venture down line three towards Moody. The trains will pass over line one, dive down into the tunnel, which will pass under Connaught Park, and emerge at our next stop. Next stop, Queensview which is located directly adjacent to Leon's Furniture Warehouse and has access from Queensview Drive. 
into the station from this side. You can see the platforms down below and this station has three levels. So the train platforms are at the lowest level. There's a mid level, the concourse where the fair gates, the ticket vending machines are. And then there's an upper level, the third level, which is a open to everyone's free access pedestrian crossing to cross over to the other side of the highway on Baxter Road, just next to the Ottawa Citizen Building. And what's interesting here is the connection on Baxter Road, which we see now. Very simple building, but still doesn't skimp on any of the accessibility inherent with the no train station. Stairs, elevators going up, dual elevators redundant. And in the next shot, you're going to see the pedestrian crossing, crossing over to the train side and to Queensview Drive. So it'll create a great train station with lots of accessibility and connection options, as well as a new pedestrian crossing to cross the Queensway here without having to go all the way out to Pinecrest and Greenbank. As the line exits the station, it continues along in the trench, passing this across from Ikea and the world famous Swedish meatballs and Billy bookcases, passing underneath Pinecrest and Greenbank to reach next stop. Pinecrest. Again, this station below grade in a trench, you can see where the permanent bus loop is going to be. It's not actually active right now, but they are using it to turn around buses for the still existing and legacy Pinecrest station. You can see it just located alongside and parallel with the Highway 417. Lots of glass, and it sort of has a look with the uh, horizontal support beams of the stations that we saw in the Byron Linear Park, so Sherborne and New Orchard, but still very much open to the above, airy, bright. Should be an interesting stop as well on line three. As we finish up at Pinecrest, the trains exit heading further west running alongside the 417 westbound and continue on heading towards Richmond Road and Bayshore Drive passing underneath to reach our second last stop next stop Bayshore the station right here definitely integrates a lot of the original elements of the transitway station. You can see the pedestrian crossing above the station building at the end where the elevators and structure were previously when it was a transitway bus stop. Obviously the platforms have been greatly enlarged and lengthened. Glass canopy on top, curtain walls on the sides, bright and very airy. You can see from here the pedestrian crossing that comes from the parkade from the mall goes into this new entrance building where there'll be uh, ticket vending machines, fare gates, as the whole thing will become a fare paid zone. The connections crossing over from this entrance building into the bus for local bus service or for the train service heading east or west on line three. So definitely one of those stations that reintegrates and reutilizes a lot of the existing elements of the old station because again it wasn't really all that old in comparison to Saint Laurent Blair which were built much earlier on than Bayshore ever was. As we approach our final stop, next stop, Moody. The terminus for line 3, Moody station, very interesting. Uh, because it's located right next to the Moody westbound off-ramp from the 417. The way the station is positioned, the two platforms, east and westbound, are actually offset from one another to be able to fit in and squeeze in next to the off-ramp. It's kind of an interesting design, and as you can see in this shot right here, how one extends out a good 10, 15 meters farther on the westbound side. Really the only station like that on the whole old train network, so it'll be quite a unique 
element unique at Moody. Obviously, that's the end of the line, but the tracks continue on further west to reach Corkstown Yard, light maintenance and storage facility. This facility is going to complement the existing Belfast Yard in helping to do light maintenance and storage of the light rail vehicles. It provides a lot of additional garage facility, as well as cleaning trains, maintaining, doing minor repairs. Obviously, major repairs would still help on that Belfast, but this is an additional facility to be able to spread out the load and to disperse some of the work that's needed to be done to maintain the ever-expanding fleet of light rail vehicles used on Line 1 and Line 3. Important to note, should the line be extended to Canada, the trains would actually pass alongside the light maintenance and storage facility here between the tracks and the 417 to pass by the station and head off towards Canada. So this will see some very likely modifications in the coming years if and when that project does get approved and funded. And as you can see, there are three Alstom City the Spirit LRVs parked at the maintenance facility available and ready to use for testing, commissioning, and validation of the new track, overhead catenary system, and guideways. Thanks for watching the video. Definitely a lot to come on this Western extension in 2026 as we build up to the opening in 2027. Be sure to subscribe to Rail Fans Canada so you never miss our latest content and news on Ottawa's O-Train Network.